Well, here I am in the coveted last speaker of the day slot. <laughs> so uh, some of what I'm going to say maybe uh, may have been said before, but uh, what we're going to do now is kind of take some of the pieces and organize them into steps for developing a, a health ministry. Uh, we already talked about why I have health ministry and faith communities. Uh, you know, it's biblical, it's scriptural, uh, it provides the opportunity to reach people of all ages. We talked about how the church is the hub of uh, com communities in Appalachia. Uh, there's a trusting relationship there. There's just a lot of benefits to having uh, the church focus on physical health as well as spiritual health. As with any new ministry, I think that the first thing that you need to do is, is to pray about that and to ask God's guidance and a direction in um, developing the ministry. You know, it's, it seems like when uh, something is meant to be, the doors will open and, and things will begin to happen. My sister and her husband just bought a, a 22, they bought the farm is what she tells me, 22 acres, and she was very dead set against this purchase. And he, this was his lifelong dream, you know, to have a farm. And they're getting up close to retirement age, you know, and she's thinking we should be saving money, not spending money. But she said in all of their married life, this was the, the most smooth process in purchasing, doing a major purchase like this, that they had ever experienced. So she's thinking, well, you know, maybe, and, and she even said to him, she said, I think we need to pray about this because I don't think we should do this. And he wouldn't pray with her because <laughs> he'd already decided this is what we should do. But, you know, she, she was telling me later that, you know, I think he was right. I think this is God's will for us because, you know, every time we needed something to pay for the title search or whatever, something unexpected came. They needed a ten thousand dollar down payment, and uh, between their income tax return and her bonus that she didn't get until March, rather than at the first of the year like we usually do, they had their down payment. So I think God works this way in uh, almost any uh, new thing. Uh, he will guide you. You just have to be sensitive to that, and you have to be patient. You know, sometimes it takes time once you plant that idea for it to germinate and grow. And I know with the churches that I work with, sometimes I'm impatient with them because I want them to do more than what they're doing. But it's not their time. I have a church in Ashland. It's a rather large congregation. It's a Methodist congregation. And, uh, you know, they I have been mailing things to them for years. And I think they use the wellness tips in their bulletin and so forth. But as far as actually doing much for that information, you know, to my knowledge, they don't. Well, I got a call from a lady from this church who was a retired nurse, and she asked me to come and talk to their lady circle. And now she's fired up, and she is a perfect person to, to you know, supervise this ministry. She will get things done. But it's taken probably at least eight years for, for her to feel that call to be involved in this ministry. So you have to be patient. And then you and you never stop praying, okay? Once you start, you never stop. This is just the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi since we were talking about prayer. This is one of my very favorite prayers. I think it's such a beautiful one. I just kind of wanted to share it with you. I know it's very small on your handout, but let's just let's just think about this for a minute. If you would just kind of remember that we're always in the presence of God and in an attitude of prayer, I'd like to share this with you. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Doesn't that sum up health ministry and faith community nursing? Um, St. Francis was way ahead of his time, I think. Then you want to learn everything that you can. You've learned a lot today, but there's a lot more out there to learn about health ministry and faith community nursing. Lots of available resources. 
Um, talk to others that are involved in health ministry. Maybe, maybe if your church doesn't have a health ministry, but you know of a church that does, begin to learn how they're how they're um, managing that and what they do in that. And then, uh, even though we talked about denominational lines are becoming more blurred, your mainline denominations, a lot of them do have a lot of uh, information about health ministry and parish nursing. The Methodist Church does, Presbyterian Church USA does, uh, Seventh-day Adventists, you see a lot of uh, parish nursing and health ministry in the Catholic Church. So there's, you know, there's a wealth of resources out there. Sharon mentioned the basic parish nurse education course. You know, this has been my dream to do this ever since I got this position to begin. That's been like about 13 years now. I we were finally going to do this at Belfont in Our Lady of Belfont this summer. It's a commitment, as Sharon said. It's about a 36-hour course, and we're going to do it in three one and a half day sessions. But they're going to be a month apart, so you're going to have time to recuperate from those 12-hour days, 10 and 12-hour days. But uh, we're going to do them in June, July, August. And then at the end of the August session, we will have sort of a uh, consecration service, either in the chapel at our hospital or at one of our partnering congregations to, to you know, kind of have a sending forth type thing. But now, you know, we have the curriculum of the International Parish Nurse Resource Center that we'll be using. I'll be teaching some of it. Sharon's will be teaching some of it. And I'm recruiting some other folks. I had so hoped that I would have the brochures for the conference to share with you today, but they're still at the printers. So, uh, I, you know, I will be happy to mail you one if you will give me your contact information or email you one, or they'll be on our, our Lady of Belfont website. But I'm, uh, it's, it's my goal that we get at least 10 people to sign up for the class. And if we have more, then, you know, that's just great. I just, just love that. But uh, I think that being able to get that commitment from nurses that want to participate in this ministry, that they will, you know, that they will commit to this big block of time. Now there's contact hours for it, and we're not gonna. We have some grant funding, so we don't even have to charge for it this first go around. So I mean, you'll never. It's a sweet deal. I can tell you, you'll, you'll never find a better one. So I hope that you'll consider that. Then you want to share your knowledge. Once you've, once you've gotten all this knowledge about the ministry, then you know take it to your pastor first. But as Sharon said, please don't leave it with your pastor. <laughs> you know you need to educate other people in the church. You need to find your movers and your shakers, not necessarily just your healthcare professionals. Although you want to get them involved if you can. I have one church that we partner with. That's a rather large church. And they have actually taken their healthcare professionals and they put together what they call an emergency response team. And they sign up for a Sunday. And there's physicians and there's nurses, uh, you know, different healthcare disciplines, but primarily the physicians in the church. They each take a Sunday and they know, if, you know, if somebody collapses during the service on, on that particular Sunday, then they're the one that is to respond. So they call it their emergency response team. And, you know, if you have several doctors in your congregation, then they only have to do that once a month or once every two months or something like that. So it's a good, a good, good uh, ministry. And then you need to begin to educate members of your church as well as even members of your community. Because when you begin to do health ministry uh, events, it becomes outreach. You know, you want to invite people in the community to come if you're going to have a health fair. Or if you're going to have a, a, a ladies spa day or something like that, you know, you invite people to come. And sometimes, you, you know, you have that, it opens the door for you to minister to their spiritual needs as well as their physical needs. And maybe they'll come back. Maybe they'll come Sunday to worship with you. That happened at our church. We had a ladies spa day back in November. And a, a girl came, well, she's a woman now, but, you know, she's young. But she used to come to our church, and we hadn't seen her in a long time. So she came to spa day. We had a new pastor, and he came over two or three times and just, you know, circulated and talked to the ladies, which, you know, it takes a brave man to kind of interrupt a lady's <laughs> spa day, let me tell you. But he did. And uh, he talked with this young lady, and a couple Sundays later, she was in church. So, you know, it becomes outreach ministry as well. And as Sharon said, look at what you already have. 
that. Determine what programs are already uh, going on in your church and how you can incorporate health ministry into those programs. Um, you know, you can incorporate, as Sharon said, health ministry into your children's programs, your vacation Bible school, your senior programs, your potluck suppers. <laughs> you, can, you can work it in there if, you, if you're creative and persuasive. You can work that in. Um, you need to try to win over the leaders of, of these different ministries of your church and convince them that there's a place for health ministry in, in their programs. And then, you know, as your ministry grows, you need to uh, kind of uh, begin to fill out what some of the other interests are uh, that would help your ministry expand. Sharon uh, mentioned that, you know, in her assessment and so on about, you know, doing the congregational assessment, which is a really good starting point. But, you know, I have found congregations change every two or three years. You might not have the same group that you started with. We've seen a lot of people come and go from our congregation. A lot of them are Baptists now. I'm sorry to say that. But, but, you know, people, people come and go for different reasons. You know, we, a lot of people left our church because we went through a period where we didn't have a real active children's program. And they were young families, and they were looking for a church that had, you know, a lot of kids. Or, or their kids wanted to go where their friends go. So, you know, they ended up at the Baptist church, which is really big. So, uh, you know, so that might be a gap, one of those gaps that Sharon was talking about, that your health ministry could step in and begin to fill. Again, creating awareness about the ministry once you begin to, you know, once you get started with it, you want to talk about it in your church bulletin, articles in your church newsletter, uh, you know, communication throughout the church, whether it's by bulletin boards or, you know, we want to use technology now. Our, this generation has grown up with technology. They don't know how to put together a bulletin board. So, you know, you want to use your, uh, your web and uh, Facebook and all of these kinds of and Twitter and all these things that, they, that you know that people like that I know very little about. And of course, you know, anytime you get an opportunity or maybe make some opportunities to present to the uh, in my church, it would be the United Methodist Women or the United Methodist Men, or uh, we have a group in our church called the Kitchen Canaries, and they're they're in charge of all the dinners. You know, so try to get in with all of those different groups in your church. And then sometimes you might even be able to convince your pastor to let you have a few moments of the worship time. You know, to actually do a little mission moment and talk about your ministry or talk about a health-related topic. Uh, in some churches, uh, periodically they have a Sunday where they actually have, you know, a health awareness type uh, sermon and that kind of thing. There are, uh, throughout the year, there are national health observances that are, you know, focused on the church, like um, used to be, I think it still is, the first Sunday in May is recognized as National High Blood Pressure Sunday. You know, so that would be a really good time to do some blood pressure screening. In November, you have Organ Donor Sabbath. It's usually the third weekend in November. It's usually before, th right that Sunday before Thanksgiving. So that's a good time to just have information on organ donation available for your for your members to pick up. And you can get that free. Just contact in Kentucky. It's your CODA uh, person, the person with Kentucky Organ Donor Affiliates. Their office used to be in Huntington, West Virginia. I don't know if it still is or not. I found that a little humorous. But, uh, you know, you can, you, that's where those resources come in too, learning about all these different resources. And then you want to put together a health team or a health cabinet. You know, anytime one person tries to do all this by themselves, even if they're effective in the beginning, they're going to run out of steam, they're going to burn out. So you need to have a team and a team approach. Um, you can pick the people on your team based on their, you know, their talents, their gifts, their uh, ability to persuade people, their organization skills, and you will learn uh, I think God sends you the people that you need uh, as you as you get further and further into the ministry. So you will you will do, you will learn who needs to be on your team and how to approach them. And these are just some uh, activities of the health ministry committee. 
it's good, I think, in the beginning to create a common vision for the ministry and to establish a purpose and goals for the ministry. You know, uh, you need some uh, organization and strategy with anything new. And, you know, just because it's ministry doesn't mean that it, you want it to be haphazard or just, you know, wait for things to happen. I think you need to prepare and you need to be organized and focused. And creating a common vision and establishing a purpose and goals helps you do that. And then, you know, you want to develop a strategic plan. How do you want your ministry to unfold? I have a church that they have been part of our health ministry almost from the very beginning. Uh, they do one thing a year, and that is they help us with our bicycle safety fair. That is their event, and it's coming up in May. And I think this will be our, like our 14th one coming up. But the rest of the year, they don't do anything, to my knowledge. <laughs> so, but that's their thing, and you have to respect that. So, but, you know, you may want to have a, a health ministry event uh, once a quarter or once a month. Maybe you want to do blood pressure screening once a month. But, you know, do that. Have, take you a calendar and, you know, map out some targets of uh, things that you want to do. And if you don't hit those targets, that's okay. You just you just back up and you and you evaluate and you start all over kind of. But that gives you something to aim for and something to to strive for. As Sharon said, you need to develop a budget. Most of what you do in health ministry, uh, there you know it's free. You, you you look for free stuff, but occasionally you do need money. Maybe you need to. Uh, money to buy a blood pressure screening equipment, or maybe you would like to go to some type of training as the health ministry coordinator. So, you know, if you can get your church to establish a line item where you can have a little bit of budget, that's great. If not, then you can look for grants and things like that. Uh, there are grants out there for health ministries and parish nursing. I would start with the Health Ministries Association there is an organization in Lexington for Catholic parishes. It's called the Steckinger Foundation. And they uh, have seed money, startup money, for new uh, uh, parish health programs. And I think it's up to $1,000 for startup money. And uh, so that's a very, I mean, they, they won't turn anybody. I mean, it's, if it's a Catholic, I, think, I don't think that they uh, will fund outside of the Catholic faith. But if you're part of a Catholic parish, that's a very good uh, uh, source of, of funding. They also provide uh, money, educational grants. For instance, the, the when I was working on my master's, uh, I got two, actually, scholarships from the Stettinger Foundation during that two or three years that I was working on my master's. So it's very worthwhile looking into, and they have a website as well. Um, as your program develops, depending on the direction it takes, there may come a time when, uh, you know, you want to have a paid person in that role, whether it's a nurse or whether it's a lay person. But that's something that will uh, require discussion, you know, from your, your church board or whatever. And I think that kind of goes back to what Sharon was talking about, tracking the things that you do, because when it comes to this time that maybe you need to justify or defend that position, then you've got some data, you've got some facts, you've got some evidence to take to the powers that be that say, well, you know, since, since we've had a health ministry, this, this, this has happened, and we prevented you know, so-and-so from having a major stroke because we discovered in our blood pressure screenings that this person's blood pressure was out of control. Those kinds of things. Sharon told you all about the congregational survey, gave you some examples. Uh, I would stress that you don't want to let them actually take those home. <laughs> it's usually best to, you know, pass them out in an environment where they have time to fill them out and you can collect them and uh, you'll have a, a much better return. Partnerships uh, are, are great. I wanted to talk just a second about partnerships. Uh, if there is a hospital that you can partner with, that's great. In our case at Our Lady of Alphonse, uh, the churches that we partner with, they have access to all of the resources of our hospital. I am their liaison. All they have to do is contact me. Um, 
it's not the parish nurse's responsibility or the health minister's responsibility, as I said earlier, to actually do the health screenings or the flu shots or whatever you might be doing in your congregation. They just organize it. So all the churches that partner with me have to do is call me and say, hey, we want to do flu shots in the fall. Can we go ahead and schedule? And I go do it. You know, I take everything they need. The same is true of the health screenings. Um, and I also do, I mean, I'm in the position, and Sharon was too before she retired, where I'm over all of the community ministries that we have. So that's one of the ways that we give back to the community in, you know, doing the health fairs and things in the churches. So it's a win-win for the church. It helps, it's, it's, and for us as well, because it helps us fulfill uh, our community benefit responsibilities. It helps us keep our tax exempt status as a uh, nonprofit hospital, and uh, it uh, it helps me get more into the community, and it helps the churches uh, be healthier in their in their communities. You want to build relationships with other agencies that share your mission and values, like you know, homeless shelters, local missions, food pantries. We do a lot of work with Hillcrest Bruce in Ashland, which is a United Methodist ministry. Uh, I've done health fairs there. And in fact, they're one of our partners, just like we partner with churches. Local health departments are invaluable. They have all kinds of programs that uh, uh, your your members can take advantage of. We've done some dining with diabetes classes in conjunction with the health department and with the extension agent agency where you know we've provided the space in the kitchen and they bring in the food and prepare it and those kinds of things. And then interagency councils are invaluable. I would encourage you, even if you're not from an agency represented on the council, to attend those meetings just as a representative of, of a faith community because you will learn a lot and you will uh, meet people that you, I guarantee you, you will be able to link somebody to in the future. And then there's that first event. Most people, most churches start with a health fair. That's kind of the big thing. And that's, you know, that's very tangible. It's exciting when you prepare for it. And, you know, you usually have food and stuff like that there. Healthy food, healthy food. We used to have donuts, but we've kind of transitioned to fruit. But uh, you want to have, uh, you know, as, as much as you can, uh, I mean, your health care can be as simple or as complex as you have resources for it to be. And I always, uh, I always tell the churches that I partner with, that they're not limited to just using the resources of Our Lady Belfont. I mean, they're, they're available. But if they have uh, members of their congregation that have access to resources from other places, then, you know, by all means, use those because that's just going to make your ministry richer. You're going to be able to offer more to your, to your congregation and to the community that your church serves. Again, you want to talk it up. You want to have, you know, articles in your church bulletin or newsletter, your website, and those kinds of things. So... That's kind of the health ministry uh, in a nutshell. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I think we got maybe five minutes left before we need to do evaluations and those kinds of things. You know, I've been working with a man in my church who had uh, surgery a while back. He, uh, was, they discovered that he had a tumor in his kidney, no, in his bladder, I'm sorry, his bladder. And he had to have surgery. And he was anticipating that this tumor was confined just to the bladder and that they would go in and they would remove the tumor. Well, it ended up the tumor had gone through the bladder wall and into the intestine. So he came, after he's in surgery for nine hours and he has, uh, they removed the bladder, so he has an aerostomy and they also have to take out part of his small intestine. And so he gets through that and he gets home and he has a little open area in his incision that needs to be packed. So I mean, this is not necessarily something a parish nurse would do, but because I'm a nurse and their friend, I would go and pack this wound for him when home health couldn't go because it had to be done twice a day. Well, long story short, the wound he hit, it opened up a little bit. He ended up back in the hospital. So now he's got two or three holes that need to be packed. But the thing that Gary said that really struck me was, you know, Gary has always been a worker in the church, loves to do things in the church. You know, he's, he's 
and he does a lot of woodworking and things like that. But he, he has been so blown away by the support the church has given him through all of this. He's, he gets cards every day. People call him every day to check on him. And he had made the uh, comment to our pastor, this is a side of the church that I've never seen. And I thought, but that's what the church is. You know, but, so he had always been a giver. And now he's being a receiver of what the church and what health ministry uh, offers. And it's opened up a whole new perception for him of what the church is all about. So I, think, I just think that's a really good um, example of health ministry. Thank you.